Hey Merge, happy Sunday. Thanks for joining us for the So-and-So Show. Now we've got a brand new month, which means we have a new theme and we have a new memory verse. I'm going to share that verse with you so that you guys can start to get God's word in your mind and in your heart. All right, it's from Luke 12, 15, and it says, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. And I think that's the perfect verse as we um, lead up to Thanksgiving and then to Christmas. Just a good reminder that, you know, for us as Christians, it's not all about the stuff that we have and getting cool toys or, or cool clothes and getting lots of stuff, but rather it's the joy that we have from knowing Jesus and it is just um, just thinking about how we can be thankful in our daily lives every day for all the things that God has given us, all the blessings. Okay, hope you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. What does it feel like when you really, really want something? You think about it all the time. Maybe you save up every penny you can earn. Or you beg your parents, please, 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 I'll never ask for anything ever again. Whether it's a toy or a game or a pair of shoes or even some kind of lesson, it feels like everything will be perfect if only you can have it. And sometimes, finally, you get it. Yeah! At first, it's great. Everything you hoped for. But then that new toy or game or pair of shoes or an experience, it starts to get old. It's less exciting. Maybe even it breaks. Now you're bored. You want something else new. And it happens over and over and over again. But here's the amazing thing. God's given you a superpower to defeat the cycle. Instead of always focusing on something new, something you don't have, fix your eyes on what you do have. Ask God to help you see the value and fun in whatever it is you have now. That vintage game, that pair of kicks with serious character, that you've got time to kick the soccer ball around with your mom or dad, even if you can't be on that expensive traveling team. Choosing contentment doesn't mean you can never have new things or exciting experiences but it does mean you can find things to love in your life right now as it is. And when you do that, others can see God at work in you. And that's why choosing contentment is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
cannot. Can two. Cannot. Can two. There's no way that you can ride a unicycle. Yes, I can. It's easy. Easy? <laughs> Prove it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I will. Unicycle John, here I come. Woo! <laughs> I thought you said you could ride a unicycle. I can. But I still have the training wheel on. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. John? Yeah. You going on a bike ride? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get out and get some exercise every day, so I've been taking rides around the neighborhood. Oh, that's a nice looking bike. Oh yeah? You yeah, think so? I Man, I've had this thing for a few years. I mean, sure, it's a little old, a little rusty, but it still takes me where I want to go. <laughs> that's all I need. <laughs> Ever look at your old rusty bike and think, this is all I need? Uh, yes? Well, you're wrong. Looney Larry here with the latest deals in physical fitness to keep you as healthy as a horse. Horses are not particularly healthy. Ugh, I was hoping to get some exercise, but what's the deal with all this fresh air? Gross. I wish I could get sweaty in air conditioning and pay a lot of money for something I could do for free. Lucky you. Introducing the Lariton, a top of the line exercise bike. Want to ride a bike but not go anywhere? Get a Lariton today and ditch your old, sad, bad, rusty, barely functioning, low quality, stinky, unacceptable, cheap downer of a bike. It'll make your life better! Would I lie? I must have one. But John... Oh, it's here! Oh, help me move it in. Come on! Come on! I'm sure it's heavy! Twelve and a half minutes later! <laughs> well? Well what? Is it worth it? Are you happy now? Oh yeah, I'm so happy. Good. This is way better than a bicycle that actually goes places. No, I've got everything I need. <sighs> Are you absolutely sure your Laratop has everything you need? I was sure. Well, now you can upgrade your Laraton device with this attached digital display. Be instantly transported to other locales as you exercise. You can bike in the woods. Turn of the century London. A dystopian future. Your very own home! We've got all sorts of options. What? Look, I'm in outer space! Order a Laraton today. It is out of this world! Well, there's no way you'll... Thanks, John! I know, I know, I know. Why do you need all of this stuff? You already have a real bike. Yeah, but my real bike can't take me through the Swiss Alps. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> now I'm absolutely 100% certain that I have everything I need. Whoa! But do you really? Uh, release my friend! Love owning the Lariton, but hate all the exhausting exercise that comes with it? Introducing Larabox! For a small fee, you can get credit for your workouts without even doing them. Just enter your credit card number at the Larabock Marketplace and get fit without ever working out again. Would I lie? Nope. Need to purchase Larabock. You don't need any of this, John. <laughs> need. Do me shredded! No! John! John! Yeah. Wait! Listen! <gasps> Uni Larry! No. Uh. It's Bible story time with Kellen! Oh! Hey guys! You okay? Great, Kellen. Uh, quick question, can I borrow your credit card? Ignore him, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about this. The Apostle Paul wrote this in a letter to the Church of Philippi. You can read it in the book of Philippians. Paul wrote, I have learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. You see, 
Paul knew what it was like to have more than he needed, and he also knew what it was like to not have enough. In fact, when he wrote these words, Paul wasn't a free man. He was being held under house arrest. So what is it, Kellen? What's the secret of being content? Well, I'll tell you. After we check in with our friends Becky and Bethilda. Whoa, look at the hall of candy these two have. This, my friends, is what it looks like to have more than you need. And you think it should be easy to be content in a situation like this, right? But then, Bethilda. Who would do this? Who would do this? No! No, not the sour candy! Who would give out sour candy? Ah! I hate sour candy with all my might! Maybe Becky has it figured out. Peanut butter? Oh, no, no, no. I don't like peanut butter. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah, these got to go. But you know what? My dad likes peanut butter. So I'll just set these aside for him. You see that? Becky was able to turn something she didn't like into a positive. While Bethilda, well, she lost her cool. Becky was content, while Bethilda was not. And that's when things are going good. What happens when things aren't so good? Aw, it looks like Becky and Bethilda are a little under the weather. Okay, maybe a lot of bit under the weather. This would be one of those times when it's hard for anyone to be content. Dad! I'm uncomfortable! Dad! I need more pillows! Hello? But Thilda's a little upset. And I totally get it. I can get that way when I'm sick too. Or when I'm hungry. Or when I don't get my way. Or when someone has something that I want. It isn't always easy to be content. But then, Paul wrote that he learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. Thank you for the ginger ale. I wish I wasn't sick, but it's nice to know that I have someone taking care of me. There are going to be times when things aren't going perfectly. You're going to get sick. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be too hot or too cold or too something. And in those times, you'll need to know the secret of being content. Here it is. Paul wrote, I have learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. I am content whether I am well fed or hungry. I am content whether I have more than enough or not enough. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. Jesus is the secret. He gives us the strength to be content no matter what happens. So Jesus can help me be content and stop obsessively upgrading my Laraton? Sure. Then why do I still want Larabux? Well, it's like what Paul wrote. I've learned the secret. It was something he had to learn, and it probably took some time to really get it. Mm. So it's a process. And if I allow Jesus to work in my life over time, I can learn how to be content? My work here is done. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. You feel better, John? No. Being content is hard, but I'm learning. Then we're headed in the right direction. Yeah. Reveal the question. When is it hardest to be content? Oh, well, it's obviously hard to be content when things are bad, but I actually think it's really tough to be content when things are close to perfect. Yeah, I totally get that. Like when you're at a theme park for a big vacation, but have to wait in a long line. Or when you've got exactly what you need and uh, something better comes along. Yeah, but is the Laraton really better? Uh, nah, I think I'm gonna return it. All sales final. Okay. Good luck with that. Until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. This was the So-and-So Show. 
you know what I could do with this? What could you do? Hang laundry on it. Oh, that's yeah, great. That would yeah. get it nice and dry. Yeah. yeah. This would get nice and dry from my yeah. sweat. You know, an exercise bike is all well and good, but riding a bike in the great outdoors, well, ain't nothing better. Woo, look at this scenery. <laughs> wow, this feels great. You can feel the wind. Can't see it, but you can feel it. Far, you know. <laughs> Woo! Oh! Oh! <laughs>